On roughly the 25th anniversary of its release, we look at the last great mob movie, Donnie Brasco, starring Johnny Depp and Al Pacino in one of his best later day performances. Welcome to Mob Flix Friday. Released in 1997, in one of the last great years for American pop culture, Donny Brasco tells the true story of undercover FBI agent Joe Pisto infiltrating the New York Mafia in the late 1970s. If Scent of a Woman in the early 90s marked the resurgence of Al Pacino's career as a great middle-aged actor, ah. Donny Brasco in the late 90s solidified his reputation as a great overall actor. You know what that means? I think I do. You do. You ain't got no f***ing idea, my friend. Additionally, Donny Brasco helped Johnny Depp progress from the up-and-coming pretty boy of the early 90s to a Hollywood leading man in the mid-late 90s. Depp playing the role of real-life undercover agent Joe Pistone and Pacino as his mafia mentor, Lefty Ruggiero. The strength of Donny Brasco, 25 years later, being Al Pacino's more understated, solemn performance as a man trapped in his mid-level position, a reputable mob soldier, but no more. This isn't Pacino as the calculated criminal mastermind. This isn't the flame that burns twice as bright, burns half as long. This is someone who made it years earlier, but never really made it. Now trying to use a younger criminal associate to reinvigorate his criminal career in an era not quite suited to his outdated sensibilities. As fans of Pacino may know, there's the soft-spoken version of him from the 70s. Well, that's upset you in the past. Then there's the older version of himself. Get out of here! where he sounds like he smoked one too many camel cigarettes I'm getting that heavy feeling again and had a little too much caffeine intake and thus metamorphosized from Al Pacino to Al Cappuccino Get out of here! He shouts I take a flamethrower to this place! I swear to you! Your city! Yeah. Our city! Give me all you got! Causing certain critics to call him hammy or too over the top Great ass! First off, on the one hand, I can half agree, he can get a bit too much. On the other hand, it's our freaking Pacino. Maybe in Heat, it's the film itself that's great, but Scent of a Woman, he makes an ordinary film extraordinary. He just may have continued playing Lieutenant Colonel Frank Slade after Scent of a Woman. But let's get to it. In the last great mob movie, he switches it up and lands a performance for the ages. Different? Touching, iconic and great. Instantly iconic, as in by late 97, early 98, it's already up there with The Godfather and Scarface in terms of Al Pacino iconography. A made guy always carries his money in a roll. Why does he got carries money in a roll? Sit down there. You don't walk out on me. I walk out on you. The Coco Van scene. In a made Coco Van. Nah. Wherever you go, the best cooks are men. I learned to make a wicked Coco Van on the strength of Donnie Brasco. I know. Here's the thing his performance conveys. Real mob guys in the main are not big time super sexy drug barons. These are local guys who ended up being career criminals. The wise guy doesn't pay for a drink line. Of course not. Wise guy never pays for a drink. And this runs contradictory to the perception of the ultra flashy bling era. Pacino's character is based on the real lefty Ruggiero who lived his whole life in essentially a housing complex on the Lower East Side. For the most part, street guys are victimizers, not victims. If I exploit people on a regular basis, I'm not getting exploited by some club promoter telling me, oh, it's a grand for champagne and a table. No, f you in it. You spend a thousand dollars a night on champagne? Wise guy never pays for a drink. If I'm a gangster, I'm not paying shit. Just like in school, when a teacher says don't yeah. TJ Finance. A shut up man. Mobsters are money champions. Lefty was a loser. Scarface was the man. Me and my posse all spend big money in that club. Yeah, but bruv, you lot aren't mobsters or money champions. You're perpetual finance student dude bros, borrowing money from student loans and daddy to desperately impress gold diggers in that club. Oh man, we get that table. We get that crystal. We get that thousand gills. I had sex with an exotic princess from Kuwait, I did. It was amazing, it was. Wait, bruv, just f off, man. A hooker from Casablanca isn't a princess from Kuwait and first generation millennials like AJ Soprano getting suckered by promoters and dude bros to be the man isn't anything to do with actual street guys or gangsters. Pacino's chip on shoulder performance as lefty hustling any which way for a buck speaks to the true essence of the street gangster. Depp as the younger perceived protege being schooled by a man past his prime having to spell out he deserves respect makes the mentor-mentee relationship of Donnie Brasco supersede the generic gangster movie tropes. 
Also, having Pacino in the second phase of his peak in 97 depict both the devil himself, i.e. the dark seduction of pure unadulterated evil, and Lefty as a struggling wise guy who's committed individual acts of evil yet never fully risen the ladder of organized crime. Where the f*** am I? Demonstrates both his overall acting abilities and his solemn masterful performance in 1997's Donnie Brasco in the post scent of a woman years. Donnie Brasco was directed by who again? Uh, Scorsese, Coppola, De Palma? No, the director of a few episodes of Coronation Street in the 60s. Oh yeah, and he also directed that smash hit with uh, Mickey Blue Eyes and the chick from Groundhog Day. My bad. And get me around Brooklyn without English getting my knees broke. Figured as much. The fact it's directed by quote, some British guy, implies the Hollywood studio machine are going for a mainstream appeal, casting the guy from Edward Scissorhands, who's now a major star, rather than some typical New York Italian type, further implies this. The real Joe Pistone was a late 30s, balding, stocky, stoic, mentally strong type, and an Italian New Jersey native. This movie absolutely works, having Depp as Pistone, just like Goodfellas worked, having Ray Liotta as the more relatable main character on the fringe of that criminal New York lifestyle. Whether it had been a longer, more epic picture directed by Barry Levinson or Scorsese or whoever, I'd say keep JD as Pistone. He even talks like the real guy. That you can't get through this entire meal without saying three words. Everybody else treated me fair. Not to mention his chemistry with actress Anne Hesch. I didn't okay this man. You okay it? What do you think? You can just drop it. I put foot on that thing. What do I get for Christmas, huh? First and foremost, I gotta say rest in peace to both Ray Liotta and Anne Hesch. Secondly, I think her performance as Maggie Pistone, Depp's wife, was great in the sense that it's entertaining. All right, I don't exist, you don't exist. You love control, don't you? Realism-wise, a guy who's going undercover around the likes of Carmine Galante, a maniac boss. In reality, this is dangerous life and death work, and it requires incredible mental strength to then come home to a sassy feisty chief. What about my job, Joe? Who's gonna nag the hell out of you? Please, okay, just leave me alone. And the only resolution to a big argument is a big shag. I mean, it's a 90s mainstream movie starring a Hollywood heartthrob. At the time in the late 90s, it was all about that Gen X era amu fo tumultuous romance. The real Joe Pistone obviously wouldn't last or mesh with a sexy mental health chick. If you don't have a partner, you know, that is also mentally tough. What about my job, Joe? But Johnny Boy, bless him, as we all know, likes the damaged BPD types. <laughs> However, for this interpretation of Donnie Brasco, What do you think? You can just drop out- Hesh's temperament and performance work perfectly, in that it demonstrates Pistone is so wrapped into his undercover role with the mob, it's severely damaging his family life. And by the way, how can his seven-year-old daughter already be having a boyfriend? Since when does Sherry have a boyfriend? Stop, Joe. Uh, what the f Modern Mafia movies started in the 70s with The Godfather 1 and 2, then resurfaced in the 90s with Goodfellas, A Bronx Tale, Casino, and of course, Donnie Brasco in 97. Also, Tarantino crime movies revamped the glamour and sexiness of the crime genre. You're gonna be okay! Say the goddamn word! You're gonna be okay! Yeah. Donnie Brasco is clearly in the shadow of Reservoir Dogs. Guys just sitting around chatting about non-criminal matters, the tense suspense of undercover work, etc. For me, having a mainstream popcorn movie depict the true story of the undercover agent who infiltrated the American Mafia for six years is very specific to 97. The momentum from the already mentioned films was still fresh and 97 was the tail end of that Tarantino era. Maybe you could stretch that to 98 but by 99 that era was done and it was just before the TV series The Sopranos shifted the mob genre on its head from edgy downtown gangsters to dysfunctional suburban gangsters. The real life mob was severely decreasing in power on the street but in terms of public perception it was still somewhat seen as this naughty man power organization. You had ex mafia your underboss, Sammy Gravano, do a television interview. While we're at the table cutting up the money. He actually looked like a bad guy from the movies. The mystique was still there to an extent. Whereas now, he comes out of jail recently, starts doing all these YouTube podcasts. He looks like bloody Mr. Magoo. What the f***? The mob's aura is all gone now. So 97, the last few years when Pacino and De Niro weren't yet too old. Subject matter was still sexy. Debt was coming into his prime. Tarantino had made crime films box office. In general, life in 97 was pretty f***ing good. There's Michael Madsen playing crew boss Sonny Black on the strength of Reservoir Dogs. Silly ass 10 o'clock curfew every f***ing night. A year now I gotta be in my house with the shades drawn. It's an Irish guy from Chicago playing a Brooklyn Italian 
One can argue he's not the right man. You shut up. Look, in a different interpretation, directed by whoever you could cast someone else. Madsen Sonny is actually a composite of a few real life players. Sonny and a nastier guy by the name of Anthony Mira. Madsen Sonny Black, having scenes depict him as volatile, are there to depict the random violence in that world. Obviously Madsen is cast on the back of Reservoir Dogs, cutting the geezer's ear off to the music. Well I know did it did it did it. Well I don't yeah. If it was Scorsese or someone else, have Mira and Sonny Black individually depicted. For this picture, for this composite Sonny Black, Madsen was both iconic and the right fit. You sit down, shut the f up. You shut up, sit down, shut the f up. Bruno Kirby, very memorable as Nicky. Lefty thought he was gonna get whacked. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Maino as Sonny Red. Mate, I don't care who directed this movie, I don't care whatever interpretation they might have put out there, Robert Maino is always Sunny Red. Bing bada boom, it's done. You'll never know what hit him, that's too nice. My only critique of the film is its scale. It's definitely not a home video movie feel, but certain scenes where it's a green screen in the car. You understand? Whereas Goodfellas isn't, it is forgivable. No. But hasn't aged that well. No. But heck, it was 97. We could have had at least one scene filmed in Manhattan, outside an actual nightclub, to give it that authentic disco era New York City feel. This was debauchery. That you read about in the book, Donnie Brasco. So first off, the real Ben Lefty Ruggiero was a mafia soldier in the Bonanno crime family. How about Lefty from Mulberry Street? Wasn't from Mulberry Street, in the heart of Little Italy, but down the road off Monroe Street in a housing complex called Knickerbocker Village, on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Movie-wise, they say Mulberry Street because that's the commercial recognition of the San Gennaro Feast and the optics of classic mafia tenement buildings, rather than a housing development you wouldn't necessarily associate with mob guys. Again, this speaks to the real lefty being just some local working class guy with a bit more cash and reputation than the fireman next door, a New York equivalent of a Southeast London Del Boy type. Look, I've had, I've had it just a bloody money. You can't borrow money and not pay it, mate. Are you gonna make this week's big? I hope so. Because I don't want to have to come looking for you. You hear me? The movie showing him in debt does accurately speak to the essence of the local, older, working class guy struggling finance wise. Jilly, you're all from Queens, sure. Jilly from Queens is actually from Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. The movie, I imagine, says Queens not Brooklyn to distinguish between the Sunny Black Banana crime family crew in Greenpoint, downtown Brooklyn, and Jilly's Colombo family crew in suburban Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. It's just easier to say Queens to convey they're from different territories. His stone got introduced to Bonanno family soldier Anthony Mira through his Colombo family connections. Mira, another Bonanno gangster from the Knickerbocker housing complex. The boss who is whacked earlier in the film is Carmine the Cigar Galante. Now I'm gonna plant tomatoes. A ruthless, sadistic mafia boss. Basically, an old time New York gangster who tried to dominate the New York underworld and suffered the fate of a man who lived by the sword and died by the sword. Cigar still in mouth. Sonny Red and his son Bruno, in reality, were also gangsters who both grew up again in the Bonanno family stronghold, the Knickerbocker Village housing complex. Alphonse Sonny Red in the Licato and son Anthony Bruno in the Licato. These two being an example of father and son gangsters, where the son as a second generation gangster is actually a capable hitman and gangster rather than just the recipient of nepotism in him. You can move on with your life, you can change. And Bruno was allegedly on the hit team that killed Galante in 1979. Not quite the half a goofball the movie portrayed him to be. The Florida sections in Donnie Brasco, which make the movie iconic and unforgettable, depict the real life Tampa, Florida mafia boss, Santo Traficante, who in real life was the historic crime boss who made all the connections in Havana, Cuba before the revolution. The Ybor City native, Traficante, grew up in a neighborhood of Sicilian and Cuban immigrants and was thus well accustomed to the Cuban culture, a big factor behind the American Mafia's influence in Cuba. He was the only major godfather that Joe Pistone, FBI agent, could not get. Not only did the real life operation include venturing out from New York to Florida, but also to Midwestern Milwaukee, where Pistone, Ruggiero, and another agent would get introduced to Milwaukee crime boss, Frank Balistrieri. Mr. Balistrieri, what is your date of birth, please? It's none of your business. Boss of the real life Happy Days Mafia, linking the Midwestern mob depicted in the film Casino to the East Coast New York Mafia. Of course, both in the film as well as in reality, Joe Pistone came out of the Donnie Brasco operation and the consequences were real. 
Smith or Pistone could testify against the criminals he'd infiltrated for years. Crew boss, Sonny Black Napolitano, was murdered, not Lefty, as Lefty was already in police custody. Napolitano, it's reported, had said, if it was anyone, I'm glad it was Donnie. The real Dominic Sonny Black Napolitano accepted his fate and went to a meeting, knowing he'd be murdered as he sadly was. The bond between Napolitano and Pistone was, according to Pistone, more friend-like and not all business. We get up in the morning and we sit around in our underwear and watch cartoons on television. Unlike the relationship with Ruggiero. So first off, the real Joe Pistone, after testifying against a multitude of mobsters, had one of his cases all over with, so we go back to work to our families. Has had a second career in entertainment. First with the book Donnie Brasco, which is in my opinion the godfather of true crime books, whereas the movie Donnie Brasco is the Donnie Brasco of mob movies. Pistone even had a series of Donnie Brasco called Falcone, launched around the same time as The Sopranos. Falcone is more suspenseful than The Sopranos, and was thus forgotten as soon as it started. Falcone is more suspenseful than The Sopranos. No. I've been trying to see that shit for f***ing years. He appeared in the movie as one of Traficante's guys. He was also an advisor on set. He's done countless interviews on mafia documentaries, more books, and in recent years, podcasts and YouTube interviews. My thing with Pistone is, he put his ass on the line from 76 to 81, was mentally tough enough to handle going undercover during the last era when the mob was still the mob. And this guy was around stone cold killers, keeping his cool, playing the part. Of course the man deserves some financial reward after the fact. He was giving away his secrets and writing a book about what he did. So he had a little greed in his ass. It's very interesting to me when people like Gravano say he was greedy or two-faced for being around criminal targets families. Your house, and he meets your wife, and he's wired. To the gills. That's a whole new level of the pot calling the kettle black. Greed wise, Gravano killed his way to the top. Two faced wise, he killed his own brother in law and best friend. He can try to justify all he likes. It killed me. The only other person trying to slander him is ex mob wife's cast member and lefty Ruggiero granddaughter, Ramona Rizzo. He got a little bit too close to his job, and I really think that he enjoyed being a gangster. Saying any micro criticism from, why is he wearing sunglasses to hide his face? There's no one left to kill him. Why is he profiting off a book? He should give the money to charity why is he talking like us authentic new yorkers when he's from newark or patterson you know i am from the les you are not from the les you are from the staten island <laughs> super reaching for content on that one i get it he's the man who locked up her granddad she misses her granddad i can relate i miss my granddad the fact is in a society you have law enforcement to arrest and put away criminals and i'm sorry your grandfather was a criminal the sentiment was completely right, but the delivery completely wrong. To infer, he has a crooked character because he's monetizing his narrative. Coming from two Americans. What's the secret of America? What's the matter with this guy? I'm 24 years old, out of money! I can respect his aptitude and mental strength for such a dangerous job. Trying to micro nitpick he's greedy or remorseless. Look, he was a soldier for the FBI, a stone cold agent. People expect him to cry or say, I can't believe, I can't believe they killed Sonny because of me. Oh, I feel so bad. That's not my job. My job is to gather evidence and put you in jail. If that was his character, he could never do the job to begin with. He had a little greed in his ass. Forget about it. Donnie Brasco holds up but hasn't aged perfectly. Pacino carries it via the symbiotic relationship with Depp. Yeah, right. I love you, Donnie and the loaded true crime story. It's certainly a 90s picture with 90s influences, but the story of the man who went undercover in the Bonanno family when the mob was still the mob lives on today. From the 90 to 98 era of crime movies, just before the genre started to parody itself. For me, there's the top three mob films, Godfather 1, Godfather 2, and Goodfellas. Then there's the second tier, Casino, A Bronx Tale, and Donnie Brasco. If Donnie calls, tell him uh, if there's gonna be anyone. I'm glad it was him. With Once Upon a Time being in its own individual tier between the two. You've been watching Mobflix Friday, the hottest joint in town. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff and I'll see you on the next one.